if we look at the historical record, what we see is the times of, of global warming have actually been times of advancement in civilization. Now, of course, that, that would have its limit. I mean, we could get to, you know, at some point where we would get too warm. And, and, right, of you course. Know. But so far what we've seen, we're, we're at this point well within the range of natural variability. That's the point. Why is this never brought up by anybody but you? I've never heard anybody else discuss this this very controversial subject. It's well, controversial because everyone's so fixated on yes. global warming being a bad it's, thing. It's there. It's there for anybody who is willing to do their homework. You know, and if somebody uh, goes on my website or whatever and, and says, what are your sources? I'm glad to provide multiple, multiple sources going back. I've been, I've been collecting this data for decades, you know, and it's there. And I have to ask the same question. Why are we ignoring this evidence? You know, why are we? Well, the, I think we're ignoring it because climate change has become a political agenda rather, rather than a scientific question, you know. And so because there are political factions that are lined up behind it, um, you know, the, the inter, intergovernmental panel on climate change is now looked at as, as being the, the ultimate source for data on the, on the climate. And bear in mind, they were created by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and given the mandate of go out there and demonstrate that humans are causing climate change. So right from the very start, that was their mission. And they were not told, go and look for natural causes of natural climate variability, study the human. And, and, and it's important. I, I mean, I'm not at all saying it's not important for us to study our own effects on climate. But it's going to be dangerous, I think, if, if we neglect, you know, what we're seeing right here on these graphs, this graph that I'm showing you, because that's clearly not carbon dioxide. See, if we're told, and we have been repeatedly told, that carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere held relatively steady at about 280 parts per million, right, prior to the Industrial Revolution, and only subsequent to the Industrial Revolution did carbon dioxide start going up. Well, if we assume, just for the sake of argument, that, that that's correct, well, look at this graph. What we're saying is that if carbon dioxide held steady at 280 parts per million going back hundreds of thousands of years, as Al Gore has actually stated and, and as many others have stated, it's not carbon dioxide driving those climate changes, is it? Well, it can't be then. It can't be. No. If that's the case, and that's hard science. This is and, hard science. Here it right, is right and here. And that's hard science as well. You're, you're looking at something really crazy, some event. Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. Now, the alternative is, okay, are we saying if, if, if carbon dioxide is the dominant driver of climate change, and that's what we're seeing here, then what that basically says is that there's some gigantic unknown reservoirs of CO2 that have outgassed into the atmosphere, which again undermines the so-called consensus view, because so far the consensus view consensus view states that that cl that CO two is only increased because of burning fossil fuel. So this graph is the real inconvenient truth. This graph, <laughs> that's well put. Yes, this graph is the real inconvenient truth. And when we look at some of this, I mean, right there. That is a major global warming right there, because this dashed line represents the modern temperature. Like the, so, the, the 20th century average is this dashed line. That dashed line, but what year are we looking at right there? Right here, this is between 100 and 150,000 years ago. And that's a giant jump. That's a giant jump. I mean, so what, what does that represent as far as degrees in temperature? Oh, well, let's see. That's probably going to be, you know, 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. Yeah, right there. So that's, you know, again, 15 to 18 times greater than the, than the, the presumed temperature increase of the last century. Is there any mainstream, I, I shouldn't say mainstream, scientific explanation for what that is? No. Well, no. It's, it's called the Eemian. Called the Eemian period. It's an interglacial period. But even within the interglacial period, you see that there are these massive oscillations. Massive cooling. And cooling then massive and warming, warming again. again. Yeah. And so there's a variability. If you're saying the warming is between it's 18 degrees, is that what you said? Up to, up to that. So yeah. the cooling, you're talking about almost that much in yeah. the other direction. In the other direction. Yes. God, and you're talking about this over a period of just a few decades? Well, as we get back this far, we don't have the same degree of precision as we do when we're, we're here. Um, perhaps, yes, but we, we're not sure. But we do know that these changes that we're looking at here that terminated the last ice age were just in a matter of a few years. Yeah.
For sure. And the, and the instantaneous nature of those is what you focus on when you start talking about asteroidal impacts and things along those lines. That that is something that we can explain. Yes. That's something you can point to. By default, there doesn't seem to be a lot of other things that we can invoke to explain what we're seeing right here. And there's absolute evidence that we have been hit multiple times. We're going to get into that, yes.